good morning it is saturday morning and we have got gray skies and drizzle <laughs> that beautiful bit of uh hot weather we've just had i mean it was beautiful but boy was it hot uh has um yeah it's just vanished the slugs will love it <laughs> i'm not going to mention slugs again that's over that's it no more slug talk for this week i promise so i'm up here this morning it is gray and drizzly um, but I was really lucky I was at a friend's wedding on Thursday and she had the most fantastic weather for it and it, like loads of it was outside so um, I'm glad she caught the good weather and that uh, it didn't set in before that. So if you watched the plot tour which was last Thursday uh, the peas are coming to an end well the tall telephone peas are still going strong but the golden sweet monge 2 and the first sewing of the hearst screen shaft are pretty much over so i'm probably going to strip them and take them out this morning so that bed will then be ready to put some more bits and pieces in uh when the stuff that's in the cold frame is getting strong enough to come out and i'm also going to be doing a little bit of summer pruning i don't do a lot of summer pruning but the apple trees that we've got directly outside the shed um so they've been here for a long time. They're only small, I've kept them quite tiny, but they have a tendency in previous years to be constantly growing out towards the light because we have an oak tree above us. When we moved the shed down here, which was like two years ago now, because the shed used to be at the other end. When we moved the shed down here, I raised the canopy of the oak tree massively. So it's gone way up. And it means that there's now loads more light down here, but a lot, but the trees are still really lopsided. So instead of that first year, like hacking them right the way back, I've just been each year kind of like taking them back further this way. And they're starting to grow into a nicer kind of more even rounded shape. I do the kind of reshaping uh, in the summer, because if you cut things like apples back in the summer, they don't put on like a whacking great burst of growth. They tend to kind of keep the shape a bit better so I always do that bit in the summer if you if you're trying to encourage more growth on your apple tree I do it in the winter but I'm not trying to do that I want to keep them really really tight and small try and keep all of the fruit trees really quite small on the plot not because of rules I know lots of places you have rules about the root stock that you can grow things on so that it's only on a dwarfing root stock which is really quite sensible really but the reason we try and keep all of our stuff is small is purely for ease of picking so the pear and the cherry up there i haven't started really cutting them back hard yet because i want them to get a little bit taller than they are to start with and then i'll keep reining them in but the apples down here uh, we've been doing for years so they need a bit of a chop back the only tree that i haven't really been able to do that with is the mulberry because mulberries do not respond well to being pruned and is an absolute monster that tree or at least it will be and you know how mulberries um when you see an elderly mulberry tree they're never like upright with a you know top growth it's always just like because that's how they grow and that one is doing exactly the same thing so i'm gonna have to do a bit of looking into what the best way of keeping it a little bit smaller is um because otherwise it's going to shade everything out <laughs> but i don't regret it I don't regret it it's a beautiful treat we covered the apricot at the end of last week if you again if you watch the plot tour you will have seen um that we've got some apricots coming and they're starting to sort of ginger up a bit so uh we've covered that with a bit of netting but yeah basically the weather's turned and we're at a bit of a slow patch up here now like this midsummer thing i'm not going to start sowing the stuff for um kind of overwintering in the polytunnel yet that will probably be september so August is quite a quiet month, but it means we're going to get on with a lot of like the big jobs that need doing. And one of the main ones of them is sort the chicken house out. We were planning to do that this week, but the dump where we would go to dispose of the rubbish, because we can't have fires here anymore, uh, where we would go to dispose of the rubbish, they actually had a fire about three, four weeks ago. Um, the dump um, caught fire a big drama and lots of fire engines but it means that they're closed or they have been closed and they're opening up next weekend and we've got a spot to dump some stuff which means that we are going to really attack the chicken house and take out the bits that need taking out and uh, sort it right out so that's going to be a job for next week going to be a bit of a quiet week this week i think but first job is definitely the peas righty ho oh it's a gray morning it's proper grey up here. It's like that, you know when you get that really flat light? <sighs> At least with all the rain, everything's pretty lush and green. 
and beautiful. Beans are starting to come up the arches really nicely. And the dahlias are looking gorgeous. Actually, the dahlias really appreciated that bit of sunshine we've just had. And these are the peas. They're looking pretty sorry for themselves, really. Although, having said that, like, there's a lot of new stuff coming on the tips here. By stuff, I mean growth. <laughs> Look, there's even more flowers on this one. Mm, maybe I should leave them a bit longer. But these ones, no, you see, there's new stuff coming on here as well. Oh. I mean, these pods are going to be ready shortly, but there's no point cutting them off, is there? Well, actually, now I'm up here, I think I need to leave them for a couple of weeks. The her screen shelf on this end really had very little coming and like not much action at all last week. So I was going to take them out, and uh, but now there's quite a few coming and they're not ready to pick. So I think I'm going to have to leave that. Same with the monge too. They are just starting to reflower at the top. So that's one job off my list for today. I mean, there's always weeding to do. Yeah, weeding and picking. Really, I've got radishes to pick. I need to take some parsley home with me this morning. Um, some herbs. Bit quiet, chaps. <laughs> Okay, some good mowing done, but I've just remembered I've been given a little cucumelon because I didn't grow any myself this year. So I might just make a little teepee for that to go up and get that in one of the beds. So I'm going to make a really, really narrow teepee for this, just with these three canes. So cucumelons are like a little tiny cucumber that looks like a baby watermelon. They're really delicious. They have a slightly lemony flavour rather than just a basic cucumber and their skins are quite tough. It's mostly seedy, but they've got a really fantastic lemon flavour and what they're really nice for is um, cutting them in half and then freezing them and using them as ice cubes in a gin and tonic absolutely tick and they're really really delicious but the plants themselves are really quite delicate and spindly like they don't bush up and kind of ramble everywhere or at least mine didn't last year and I have only got the one plant so I'm just going to make this really narrow teepee and wind quite a lot of string around it so it's got a lot to cling on to and uh, just get it to grow straight up here. I don't want to take up a massive amount of space with it. I could have put it on the arch that I've got the achocha growing over but there's not that much for it to scramble up there and the achocha are such dominating plants that I think they'd probably just get crowded out. So just here out in the open um, the leaves aren't particularly big and like I say, they're not massive growers. So it's not gonna to be too much of a wind trap. Like if you've got really top heavy plants and you put them on a really narrow teepee, the likelihood is if we get wind, it's just gonna blow over. But this one, if I push this quite far into the ground, it should, it should be absolutely fine. There you go, little chap. Looking forward to my gin and tonics, flavoured by you. 
while I'm in this bed, there I've got these spring onions here, which are Lilia that are uh, like multi-sown, so they're really quite close together. So I'm just going to pull out, some of these are looking quite big, pull out the biggest of them and give the little ones a bit more space to grow. Look at that colour. I mean, I absolutely love, you know, I go on about these spring onions all the time, but I just think they are gorgeous. Also going to pick some radish. These are Alba, which are the little white ones. These are the ones that mum really likes roasted. And we've thinned these ones out quite a lot as we've gone along. You can see they're quite well spaced now. I mean, way over spaced for a radish, but we have just kind of been picking them as they go. And then as you leave more space, a bit like the spring onions, the ones that are remaining get fatter. So now we've got these beautiful little globes. Monday morning cricket match or cricket practice is going on behind me so if you can hear the shouting that's what it is uh, yeah so we're up here in a break in the rain the, the weather has been torrential rain and there's been all sorts of flooding in London and everything over the last couple of days so we haven't really been up here we've just been hiding but it's not raining this morning and the Sun is actually threatening to come out which is quite exciting um, so two main things I'm going to do today is I'm going to reshape the apple tree that's on this side we've got two apple trees just outside the shed and uh, one of them is meant to be a ballerina which is just like a single spike tree but it's not it's two spikes and they're both leaning like that but this one on the end I'm going to chop off quite a lot of his excess branches because I want to lift the canopy up and now's about the right time to do it there's no apples on the lower canopy so um, I'm not worried about chopping off any fruit or sacrificing any fruit for the shape so that's the first thing I'm going to do. Second thing is, you know, if you watch the plot tour, you'll know that um, I'm really excited because my garlic chives have self-seeded. And I have tried to grow garlic chives from seed so many times and had zero germination, just nothing. Nothing at all has happened. Uh, I've bought from different companies, different seeds, tried it hot, tried it cold, tried everything, just can't get it to go, but they've done it for themselves. So I'm going to be moving some of those because they're all scattered in underneath the asparagus bed and I don't really want them there. So I'm going to transfer them. I've got a patch that I want to put them in next to the artichoke. I'm also going to put some in a pot for a friend and the rest of them we're going to plant underneath the apple tree. So they are my main jobs for this morning. These are the two apple trees, so it's, they are really like right as you come out of the shed. And we've got some gorgeous apples coming on them, look at that. They're looking really healthy. We didn't get any apples last year, so I'm quite excited about that. But these lower branches are the ones I'm gonna take off. I just want this to be straight pole and then round off the top. That's the idea. Mum's doing a bit of weeding underneath, uh, which is always handy. 
the one that's above her, so this is the one that's meant to be a single spike ballerina. And I want to find a way to tie it back. And I don't know whether I'm going to put a prop or hammer in a spike and kind of ease it backwards. Not sure yet. Interestingly, we appear to have a runner bean growing up here. That's totally self-seeded. Um, we'll probably just leave it. But yeah, <laughs> that's not part of the plan. So main objective really is to take the bottom branches off this apple tree. You know, when we made this bed, which was thanks to you that the shape turned out to be this um we decided we were going to make a bit of a woodland garden under here so i just wanted to lift the apple tree right up and allow a bit more light in well, i'm pretty pleased with that that's given us loads more light under there so hopefully that's going to give things a bit of a better chance to get established Things like these garlic chives. So these two big clumps here are the ones that I bought in pots, you know, and planted out and they are flowering again now. But from last year's flowers, look at all these baby ones. Little self-seeded bits of uh, garlic chives, which is pretty exciting. So I'm gonna lift as many of these as I can. And like I said, put some in a pot for a friend. In fact, the friend who gave us the cucumber melon that I planted the other day. And uh, yeah. God, I tell you what, like these are not tiny seedlings. Look how, God, I'm sorry, the asparagus fern's in the way, but look how big the roots are on that. Pretty mighty. Get them all planted up. So I'm going to plant them in two clumps. I'm going to do one in the bed next to the artichoke, like I said, because that's going to have quite a lot of permanent stuff on that one end. I'm going to bunch them into two bunches because when I planted the two that I've got really well established there, they were just like a bare root little bunch of them and they've grown really well so i'm going to bunch a load of these up and fingers crossed we'll have two new patches of garlic chives i can't really leave them in under here because um this area gets completely like wiped every year as soon as the asparagus uh, starts dying down we chop it all down the whole lot gets just weeded cleared and mulched really thickly ready for the next year so these guys really wouldn't survive in here anyway so they've got to come out but i'm hoping that they're going to take to their new homes. But well, I'm actually not going to take all of these out. I'm going to leave half of them in because considering how uh, pernickety they've been and how difficult I found to get them to grow, I'm a bit reluctant to take all of these precious seedlings out, bunch them together and then find that it hasn't worked. And then, so I'm going to leave some in here and if it doesn't work, I will think of another strategy. But fingers crossed. in here it's got everything it's dead <laughs> can i just plant the seeds straight back in the top there yeah okay. have we got any basil up here i hope so got the carrots are here not sure i deal Not 
No Basil. No Basil. Right now, five, four. And a little bit of ivy growing in there too. It's filling up, isn't it? Yep. Right. I think that mustard looks like it's ready to come out. It's really thickly sown, so I'm going to have to separate them out as I plant them. We do, Lil. Meow, meow, meow. You don't like mustard. Yeah, it's more thickly sown than I would normally sow it, um, but everything kept getting eaten by the slugs, so I was a bit happy on the seed. I know I keep showing you this, but I am absolutely crazy about that chicory flower. <laughs> and just as we're walking over there, look at that. We have a Marina di Chogia coming through there. And this is where I'm gonna put them, next to the radishes. excited are you about the gladioli, Mum? I'm very excited. <laughs> That'd be good. I want to pick it, but I really think I need two. <laughs> you know, to, to make a, for a vase, really, don't I? Might be a bit avant-garde with just one. This one. These are looking very pretty, though. They are, aren't they? I just wish I could stand them up. I lost things to go here. Oh, I had a, Some more stuff in here. The flowers this year really are fantastic. It's just so much life. Yes, I am going back towards the chicory. How can you not love that? I know it's all over the place in every field in the country, but that colour, I love it. <laughs> but yeah, loads of flowers. Mum's hiding behind the poly. <laughs> I tell you what, these are gorgeous too. This is the Greek Gigantes flowers. Look at that, the white and the really pale primrose yellow. Oh, they're just gorgeous. So pretty. And look, actual beans on the go. The only thing that's really suffered in that last bout of rain we had was the cornflowers. Look, they've been completely smushed. Hello. Yeah, we might have to just pick a load of them today, stick in a vase. Absolutely gorgeous blue sky at the moment and sunshine. Real, genuine sunshine. The only thing in terms of flowers that's been quite disappointing this year was the wildflower mixes. I mean, we do have some really beautiful stuff in there, but it's just not as good as it was last year at all. I don't know whether the company changed the mix or whatever. I'm just not as impressed. Got some gorgeous crocosmia on the go though. That is about to burst into flower. And uh, the lecanthemum, like cartoon daisies. Well, it's actually turned out to be a spectacular morning. It is sunshine and the weather forecast is just I don't know what it is. It's like the weather forecast is constantly saying it's going to be raining for weeks, it's going to be terrible, it's going to be terrible. And then we get a day like this, like out of the blue. It's meant to be thunderstorms all day today. And uh, it's quite clearly not. It's gorgeous. 
It's currently 45 degrees in the poly house. I've got to pick a couple of tomatoes. Uh, yeah, and we're just going to pick some things and go home and do some lunch. Uh, I'm going out this evening or this afternoon, so can't be up here this afternoon. Yeah, I've actually been um, messing around with... So I've got, I've recently uh, just changed my bed and got a new mattress, which is divine. It's so good but uh, I do have the old bed bases sorry you're shaking because I'm holding you any good yeah um, yeah so the old bed bases we've actually got at home in the back garden at the moment and I'm going to strip them out this afternoon before I go out and think about whether we can use them up here as boxes because it's only a four foot bed like a small double sorry there's an airplane going over but you know the noise today is just it's crazy what with the kids playing cricket so I'm just going to carry on um but yeah so I've got these bed bases which look like they might fit onto the beds um it's a small double so it's only four foot and our beds are four foot so I'm hoping I'm going to be able to strip them down and uh, use them for something up here so I'll do that when I get home actually we're going to go home and have some lunch those tomatoes that I'm just about to pick I think there's a couple of sun gold ready in there so tomato mozzarella bit of that sort of thing and um, then I'll strip those beds down and we'll see what we got can you see that I can are you filming? I, oh, see, look at you. I've got to look at It's like a tree trunk. It is. I could see that just about. <laughs> I'm also going to pick some leeks. So right, just okay. Try to, I'll just get the trowel. So these are the nipper leeks that you pick when they are really quite skinny and small. And uh, they're super sweet and really fast growers. Well, the sunshine didn't last. As soon as we got home, the skies opened and uh, these are the bed boxes that I'm meant to be stripping out, but it's just too wet. So that is gonna have to be a job for next week. Boy, is it soggy. I've got to go out in this in a minute. At least the Agapanthas look pretty. <laughs> well, the weather's been a bit all over the place, hasn't it? doesn't know whether it's coming or going and the forecast is just basically wrong whatever it says on the forecast it's not going to happen it's not going to happen <laughs> yeah anyway cheers thanks very much for all your messages about um the damp squib that was going to essex um <laughs> it was uh, not an enormous success but i am still planning to go back like i said at the end of the last video and uh, i will let you know when that's going to happen like I also said in that video, I'm trying to arrange to get down to see my sister, but kind of in the same vein as the weather, we want the weather to be really nice when I'm down there because the last time I went down there, it just rained the whole time. So we really want the weather to be nice, but uh, what with the forecast just basically being inaccurate, 
<laughs> it's really difficult to know um, when it's going to be the best time to go. So it's not going to be this weekend, but it's probably, it, but it might be the weekend after. So um, I don't know. But Johanna is coming here this weekend, so you might catch a glimpse of her anyway. Just not her garden. But yeah, sticking with the weather theme, sorry, like classic uh, British just talk about the weather all the time. But this weather is basically just designed for blight and slugs. I'm not going to talk, I said I wasn't going to talk about the slugs. I'm not going to go into the slugs, but the blight. I have had so many messages from people just saying that basically their entire tomatoes for the year have been wiped out like when they haven't even got the first tomatoes ripe yet because obviously everything's so late normally by this time we would be well into the picking and have had quite a good crop but it just hasn't worked out that way we haven't had enough sunshine i see some people on instagram are like picking basketfuls but that's what happens on instagram everybody's doing something amazing that you're not <laughs> that's just what instagram's about um but yeah, so some people seem to be picking a lot of tomatoes. I'm not. Those little sun gold that you saw me picking. I have picked a couple of others. I mean, we've had sun gold since really early. Um, maybe the first one we picked to them was about two, three weeks ago. But other than that, I've had one red. It might have been a slightly underripe black Russian, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I was just a bit keen. I picked it too early. But yeah, I mean, I've had so many messages from people who's like, that's it. They haven't had a single tomato this year and they've had to rip all their plants out, which is horrifying. And I know there's blight on our site already when you've been nurturing those plants. Like, And the thing about the tomatoes is that you've got so many different varieties and there's so much excitement about them. And like a year where you don't get any, any, toma any tomatoes. Oh, it's just awful. I know Johanna's had blight, but only on her outdoor tomatoes. So we've got everything crossed that it doesn't get into the polytunnel. That's what happened to me last year. Our outdoor tomatoes got blight, not this early. After this, it would have been probably the beginning of August they got them. But yeah, so we had to rip them out. And we were really convinced that shortly after that, the ones in the polytunnel were going to get them. But they never did. So I'm touching wood, you know, touching wine. Uh, it's better than wood. Um, that uh, it doesn't spread in there because... But yeah, basically what I was going to say there is blight is rife. And if you've been hit with it, I'm really sorry. There will be next year. But although we may not be uh, experiencing the tomato glut that we should have been experiencing or that we were expecting, I am like just entering and I assume everybody else is really as well. Just entering courgette glut season. Like we're still picking ours when they're really quite tiny because I don't like them that much when they get bigger, unless they get really big, because I do like marrows. But I like little tiny courgettes, normally with the flower still on, so you can stuff the flower as well, all of those kind of things. But yeah, so it's constant picking. And you round there one evening, like just before dinner, you head up there, pick a couple of courgettes, pick some herbs or whatever, and then that's all well and good. Go to bed, get up in the morning. It's like you never picked anything. Which is fantastic because actually last year was the first year of my like adult life that um, I haven't been inundated with courgettes. Uh, because we had that problem with the aminopyridid last year, everything got pushed back. And then when we did get the courgettes in, they just did nothing. They just sat there. We had a couple of, we did have a couple of courgettes. It wasn't like we didn't get anything off them, but the plants were really weak. And they just never got going, really. So we were bereft of courgettes last year. What we did have a lot of, though, was patty pans. But they were in a different bed. And they just grew away like crazy. But although I do like patty pans, I don't like them as much as courgettes. I do like them quite big, though. Those Bennington's green tin. You saw Mum picked one that was about that sort of size. If you let them get really big and then... Well, I say really big. Like, that sort of size. That sort of size. Um and then just scoop them out and stuff them oh so good so good but yeah well we haven't got any that big yet that was the first Bennington's that we had picked so yeah on to what's happening next week so next Thursday is going to be what to sow in August because we're going to be right at the end of July the end of July how did that happen I'm not sure but that's where we're going to be um so that's going to be next Thursday's video and then the following week it's going to be quite a lot of projects because obviously I've got those, the old divan halves from my bed uh, that I'm going to make something from. 
don't know what it's going to be yet. I have to really strip all the material off them and see what's in there and what's usable before I know what I'm going to do with them. But they're definitely going to be useful for something. And like I said earlier in the video, we're going to be starting the project of, of renovating the chicken house with a mind to get some more girls. So um, I'm proper excited about that. So we're just going to renovate the whole lot of that and get that all sorted and ready for some new girls and that's going to be really exciting. It is still raining. I'm going to have my glass of wine um, and make some dinner, I think. And pray to the weather gods for some tomato ripening weather. Cheers chaps and thank you as always. Hij heeft niet nog zo hoog, Mienje. Hij heeft niet nog zo hoog, Mienje.